career highs, basically every statistic. But these last couple weeks, the way he's been playing, is it fair to say that he's playing maybe the best he's ever played for you? I think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think what's really helped him is uh, obviously all the experience that he's gained over the years, but also I think, well, certainly I, I felt like he would have a spectacular senior year with Gabe not being here. I think a lot of people thought our team would suffer because we lost such a good player in graduation to Gabe Olshaney, but I think it's really helped Woodbury uh, with his confidence. He's playing a lot more minutes. His role is obviously much more critical than it's ever been. I mean, he's been a starter since he got here, but and the way he anchors the defense and the communication that he provides and the rebounding and you know, he doesn't make mistakes. He's scoring the ball. And he's, he provides an element of toughness that I think every team needs. Why has he been rebounding the ball so well lately? Uh, I think he just he's going after it pretty good. Uh, I think he's always been a good rebounder. I mean, you look at his numbers, considering he played half the game, pretty good numbers. You know, you prorate that, he could lead the league in rebounding. I said that, you know, every year. So uh, I don't think it's a surprise if you look at it. Yep. Top five scores, shoot 47% or better. What, what makes them so efficient? Well, they, they, they move the ball, they run, they, they attack, they, they get layups. If you're shooting those kinds of numbers, you're getting layups. Uh, they're also a good three point shooting team for the most part. So they got your defense stretched out. You know, Brian's a handful, you know, they're shooting way up there, so you got to worry about him. There's a lot of weapons that they have, so they're a hard team to guard. Your team's been referenced, your program's been referenced as one that other teams would like to emulate and based on the way you've built it. Um, what, do you, what are you most proud of from the second you came in here and the low st and where the program was left before you to where you are now? What are you most proud of of this journey that you've made? I'm just, I'm just thankful for the opportunity personally. And you know, what, I, what I appreciate is what our players make a decision to come here, you know, maybe when it wasn't as fashionable, uh, believing in themselves that they're going to make something happen when they get here. And it, you know, it will be great. Uh, I think you love that about any competitor that you recruit. So I think we've done a, a good job as a staff identifying uh, character, the most important. And that's the great kids, you know, in this program uh, since I've gotten here. And, and had some when I got here, we were recruited by the previous staff. So I don't want to forget those guys because I always say, you know, once you take over, those are your guys. Everybody likes to say, well, that's his guys, and then you get your guys in there. I think that is a fallacy, and I think it's unfair. And when you become the coach at Iowa, whoever's there is your player, and you coach them up. And, and uh, we had good kids when I got here. And you have good people who will work hard and be better. We added some more. I think we've done a good job of, of fitting the pieces together in terms of position, what we needed. And, uh, you know, they, they continue to execute the game plan night in and night out. So, you know, there's, there's, I don't know that there's anything magical to it other than if you recruit good kids that work hard and believe in each other, that you, know, you can win, uh, even against the teams in this league, which is not easy. When you did come in, as you mentioned, you had Gaines, you had Cole, you had Bay, you know, all hardworking guys who were you know, like Andrew Brommer, Right. You know, he wasn't as good, mm -hmm. but he was a terrific person, did everything he could do to help us win. And, you know, so I, I, I had at least a core group of guys that, that, that you know, don't forget Bryce Cartwright, I mean, he was terrific. Right. But along those lines, what what did you identify first that you had to do just to be able to take the steps forward and not just go recruit a couple of JUCO guys and, and join you? What, what you do is you identify, okay, what do you have and what do you need? Uh, typically, you're not going to, you know, I got this job in April, and you know, you're not going to sign a lot of guys in April and May that are going to help you contend for the Big Ten Championship. And we were fortunate with Bryce Cartwright because yeah. You know, he led the Big Ten in assist. But again, it goes back to the kind of person that he is. Uh, and you know, we look down the road a little bit. You know, we look to you know, Mike's and, and, and Woody's class in particular. We, you know, we got after Jared and 
and Josh, and then you got to find some other people like you know, Ola Shaney, and we're lucky with, with Melsa, you know, who was a terrific player. So I think you have to be patient. It's easy to look and say, especially, you know, I, I've said this before, but you know, the first workout I went to to work the team out was four guys there. So you know you need bodies, but bodies aren't going to get the job done for you. You need quality. You need pieces. They don't have to be superstars. They've got to be able to help you in a lot of different ways. And I think everybody we brought in has been able to do that.